Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week we're going to be assembling the 383 Stroker short block for the old Chevy pickup truck. My favorite and most looked forward to part of this entire build. So let's get started, see how far we get. Thanks for watching. So I just got back from my local machine shop where I had mentioned in an earlier video I had to take this rotating assembly for the stroker motor that we're building. I had to take that stuff and get it balanced. Well, I just got back, picked up my parts. The guy who done the work is a good friend of mine. He said everything went as good as it could, right? Balanced out really well and should be a nice smooth running engine. So I'm excited because I can finally start assembling my parts together for the final time instead of test fitting and going through all that stuff. So it's almost time to start jamming parts into this block. Well, carefully placing them. Probably more accurate. Hello, Bobby. He's excited to see you, Grandma. So I've heard a lot of people talking about getting soft lifters and having trouble breaking in flat tappet camshafts recently, like they're getting a bad batch of lifters here in the here in the states from several different cam manufacturers as well. It's not just one. So luckily, I am using a roller setup and hopefully won't run into any problems with the. With my camshaft but that would be a big concern for me right now if i was running a flat tappet setup i would definitely try to use every trick in the book to try to make it last because break-in is extremely critical with a flat tappet setup so this little tool right here is extremely helpful for putting in these spiral locks you can push or pull with it it's nice and smooth on the end doesn't damage anything and i like to take these clips and just spread them out just a little, not bend them, but put them between my fingers like that. Just resembles a key ring, really. And then use this tool to get it down in the groove. And just push around. Sometimes they go in easier than other times. Same thing, kind of put it between my fingers. You gotta make sure you get them in there good as well. Definitely don't want one of these coming out. So I'm cleaning this block for the final time, just getting, just flushing it off really, because I've already cleaned this thing pretty thoroughly once and all of the lifter or all the oil galleys and stuff, just flushing anything dirt or anything that has settled on this thing, even though I've had it bagged and it's, you know, it's pretty important that you keep everything clean. Using the sure shot and this is just gasoline. Why gas? Petrol, whatever you call it, because it works and it works extremely well. So there we go. That block is about as clean as you're gonna get it. I'm just gonna wipe the boards out really quick. These Sure Shot sprayers are absolutely awesome. And I just caught all the mess in in this Tupperware container. 
and you know when I'm done with it I'll just take it and dump it in the bushes I mean I mean dump it in my waste barrel outside by the bushes that I responsibly recycle So I had this crankshaft balanced, polished, and cleaned, but I'm still doing the cleaning myself. Nylon bristled brush running through all of the oil ports. Just to make sure, you know, there's no trapped polishing compound or anything that was missed. So there we go, crankshaft and camshaft installed. And this being a four bolt main block, at least this one anyway, the inner and outer bolts get torqued at a different value, so you gotta watch for stuff like that. And then, you know, go through, make sure, got all the caps in the right position and the right direction, because all that matters. Spins freely, you know, that, that uh, assembly fluid is pretty viscous, but we did a test fit on this. We know that, you know, everything rotates as it should, so, I guess it's time to start putting some power pumpers or some <laughs> pistons in this thing. So before I put this piston in, I first inspect my clips to make sure that they are seated proper, not popping out at all. I mean, it's the last time you're going to be able to see this stuff. So you want to give it a good, you know, once over, make sure, you know, everything's in order. I'll check my rings and I'll stagger them yeah you know, i've seen people say to put them at specific points I, i've never done that i've never had any problems just make sure that the ring gaps are not lined up you know 180 degrees on, apart on the two compressions basically what i do and then on the oil ring i just make sure that i got quite a bit of space between the three gaps and that's it a little bit of lube now these Small block rods have a large chamfered side and a small chamfered side, and it's a pretty common mistake for people to put these in backwards. So the large chamfered side goes towards the lobe on the crankshaft. The no chamfer side, or the very small chamfer side, goes towards the rod. So there's a big bevel on the on the uh, on the crankshaft itself, so it's kind of self-explanatory but it'd be easy to overlook if you uh, like hadn't done it before. So this tool is from Summit, actually come from a viewer, sent it to me. It's made for this bore size and it's super easy. It's the first time I ever used one of these. So really, really surprised at how easy it makes piston installation. But that's its only job is to do that. So there we go, just like that. Place it down in the bore. 
then hammer handle. That is very slick. And there we go. I'll put on the cap. And that's installed. So I picked up a 4140 steel oil pump drive. So no more plastic ring. So because I didn't get the factory oil pump bolt with this thing, I opted to go for the ARP oil pump stud. Now, come to find out, this stud's actually too long and causes interference. Presses on the upper main bearing shell actually and uh, can cause you to lose all your oil clearance. I luckily caught it ahead of time when I seated my bearing in here but had I not caught it it would have closed up my oil clearance at least in one little spot could have caused me problems so glad I caught that. So I'll be priming this engine with a drill, but I want this pump to pick up fluid pretty easily and quickly. So I put a little bit of this comp cams assembly lube grease on the actual gears themselves to just temporarily tighten up the clearances, maybe make this thing have a little better suction right off the bat. You know, and this stuff I'm not gonna hurt anything, just not gonna use an excessive amount, just enough to, you know, coat everything and tighten it up a bit. So I'd like to pause for a second and just say thanks to everybody who sent their well wishes. At the end of last week's video, I mentioned that we had to say goodbye last week to our little uh, Chihuahua Itsy. We had had her for 14 years and she was definitely part of the family and it's always tough to say goodbye to them. But in her case, she had had health issues for quite some time. We knew that it was coming, so it wasn't a big shock, but that doesn't make it any easier. As soon as Itsy passes, a new member of the family just shows up out of the blue and uh, you know, it's just the way it works around here. So let me introduce you to the new member of the family and shop supervisor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's definitely that time of year and I want to introduce you to Clover the Eastern Gray Squirrel. Just a little girl. She's, uh, what do you think? How old do you think? She's probably about four weeks, maybe. Yeah. Three to four. So she'll be hanging around for a little while until she gets big enough to care for herself good. And I'm sure she'll be running around the shop. So I've got the bottom of the engine all together here. You can see I've got my degree wheel attached to the front of the crankshaft. And in a nutshell, what I'm doing is making sure that my camshaft and my crankshaft are in time with each other according to the camshaft specifications. Checking the intake lobe center line, which in this case is 106 degrees. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail on how 
to degree a cam simply because there's tons of videos out there whose sole purpose is to show you how to do this in detail. And for me to do it would probably be a disservice and take a ton of time. So the purpose of this is to take the guesswork out of timing. I know that now after using this wheel that my camshaft is exactly where it should be in relationship to the crankshaft. I also know where top dead center is by using this true top dead center, not just, you know, look at the piston when it stops moving at the top, you know, call that top dead center. Because a piston comes up to the top because of the geometry, it comes up to the top and there's a few degrees of rotation in the crankshaft where the piston actually stays stationary. And with a degree wheel and so the, a few other ways, you can actually find where top dead center it really is and you can look at your timing marks on your harmonic balancer and your timing pointer and see if they actually coincide with each other and know for sure that you are indeed in time and that it is where it should be that way when you adjust the timing you know you are 23 degrees you know before top dead center or whatever you know you choose so this one was right on the money. I had to do nothing to it. I have an adjustable timing set in here, but thankfully it was just one dot to the next. And you know, that was it. No adjustment needed, just a check. And I'm glad that I did it because you know, now I know. So in my opinion, this is the easiest way to find or the, one of the best ways to find true top dead center. Now this is what's considered a deck bridge or a positive stop. It's really just, it's really a milling machine clamp with a screw. And what I do is rotate the engine until the piston comes up and it touches the stop. And I mark that on the degree wheel. Then I rotate it the other way until it comes up and stops. And I mark that on the degree wheel. And then directly between those two points that I marked, is where true top dead center is. Then I just set my degree wheel and my pointer to zero and I know that I've got true top dead center and I'm not a few degrees off one way or another. So I decided to go with a single piece uh, oil pan gasket because they're better. I don't like the the four piece sets. One final look. So I put some assembly lube inside of the front harmonic balancer seal so it doesn't start dry. Also coated the end of the crankshaft with some of the CMD extreme pressure lube along with the inside of the harmonic balancer. These things go on pretty hard. And I'm going to be using an actual installation tool instead of a hammer. I'll be honest, I have put these on with hammers in the past, but that's risky. Could end up damaging the thrust bearing in the crank or probably quite a few other things. This has got a uh, thrust bearing here and it just pushes them on real, real easy.
So I've got everything done to assemble my headlights and I want to share just one of them with you. Now this is one of the headlight buckets. This truck has four front headlights, the old incandescent type is what it had. And these headlight buckets, a couple of them had little rust holes and stuff in it. So I took these, had them sandblasted, and then I just spray painted them, right? They ain't got to be absolutely perfect, but they, I didn't want them rust. I didn't want them to have rust holes in it. This is the trim, stainless steel, which was green with the mold that was growing on it. Elizabeth took some of the Happage Simichrome polish and she polished these up for me, which I appreciate because that looks pretty good. So we can assemble what's going to be the new eyes for the pickup truck. Also picked up some hardware, Harbor Freight, and they got a, a hardware section that's full of you know, nice little stuff to keep in the shop. These things are super cheap and they're stainless. The screws that held these trims on were uh, just carbon steel and they were so rusted I had to use vice grips to get them out. The heads were almost rusted completely off. So let's assemble one of the new headlights for this truck and see what it's going to look like and we'll even peel the coating off. These were picked up by a viewer and I really appreciate it. These are LED and I think they're going to look absolutely awesome on this pickup. Plus there's no way that they can't have better light than what uh, we had originally because it was basically non-existent. I should just peel that off, but I want to save that to the last just for the satisfaction factor. There we go. One assembled. Check that out. I think that's going to look awesome. So I was a little up in the air whether I liked the look at these or not, but now that they're assembled, I think they're awesome. They're going to look really good on the front of that truck and should put out quite a bit more light than what we had originally. So it won't be like driving blind like it used to be. So I guess that's it this week. I've had very little filming time, but we did get a short block assembled, which is actually more than what I thought I was going to be able to get done. Still a ton to go, but it will actually go pretty quick. We got heads, intake, whatever fuel system we're going to do. We have starter, water pump, headers, on and on and on. And it won't be long until we'll drop that engine in this truck, which I'm really excited about. So that's it for this week anyway. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, believe me, I appreciate it. And that's it. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower